Assalamualaikum. Uh, now we are going to go into the next process which is forging process. Without further ado, let us look into the process. In the bulk deformation process, we already covered the rolling process. Uh, now we are going into the forging processes uh, from the four type of the bulk deformation process. So um, the forging process, if you want it to define it, it is a process where um, the work material is compressed between two dies and it can use either impact or gradual pressure and this process is the oldest process uh, in metaforming uh, it dates back to the 50,000 before century so this process is usually used for uh, producing the sword and all the equipment for uh, war okay and it is also uh, the basic metal industry use forging to establish a shape of large part and then uh, it can be machined into the final geometry and the size so here are some um, of the product that can be produced via the forging process among all there are uh, engine crankshaft uh, connecting rod also used in the uh, car and then we have gears and uh, even jet engine turbine part also can be produced via the forging process so uh, we can classify the forging operation in terms of work constraint uh, there are three types of them one is open die forging where the work is compressed between two flat dies where there is no wall in between the dies and then we have impression die forging which is uh, a die that contain cavity so that uh, it can uh, impress uh, the uh, work part using the shape uh, of that cavity so that you can shape into certain uh, design that you want okay so metal will flow uh, in in the in the area of that uh, cavity and then uh, it will also create, create flash okay so i'm going to uh, look in detail we are going to look in detail on the uh, operation letter okay and the last one is flashless forging so wood part is completely constrained in the die meaning there is a wall uh, and then no excess flash is created in this process so here are the uh, illustration of the type of forging operation based on the work um, uh, area okay so these uh, are the die so this one is the open die forging so this is a die and if you can see there is no wall uh, on the uh, area here so that's why it is called open die forging so what happened is uh, this uh, die th this upper die will uh, go up and down and ram into the uh, workpiece the, like this one okay the second one is b uh, is impression die forging as impression die forging it has certain shape and design uh, where you you have to design the die according to the design you want to create for the work part so what happened is um, this die will uh, uh, punch into the work uh, piece inside here and then it will create the excess material over here what we call as flash okay and this flash letter will be trimmed okay so only this uh, part inside here will be remain as the final product so the last one is flashless forging what we call as um, uh, flashless forging is because there is no flash uh, created inside here so that's why uh, the volume of the starting material and the final one will be the same okay so there is no excess material uh, or any scrap from this uh, process so uh, once you locate the work material inside here and then you punch the work material inside here it will uh, follow the shape of the uh, die inside here and no flash will be created so this one is considered as a precision uh, forging also because uh, you will be able to get a very accurate uh, tolerance material using this this kind of forging process here are some examples of the product that produced via the uh, forging process the first one is uh, the, process, the the material that uh, produced through the open die forging if you can look that uh, this is uh, there is no wall in between the both material okay so it is open die forging 
this is impression diverging if you can look here we have flash on the outside part we are going to look in in detail what is the uh, flash and everything in the impression diverging uh, section and the third one is the flashless forging flashless forging also known as the pre precision forging where it produce a product that uh, high in precision and tolerance now let us look into the open die forging first so i've mentioned uh, previously uh, open die forging is a compression or work part between two flat dies so this one is similar uh, to the work that usually used for uh, blacksmith uh, when they produce the uh, sword or something like that so this one is um, uh, when the part will be uh, what we call as uh, will be punched or will be uh, uh, compressed okay so that uh, the deformation operation will reduce either the high or and then increase the diameter of the work part so the common name also is called upsetting or upset forging in the ideal uh, condition where uh, we assume that there is no friction between the work part and also the uh, die uh, this is going to be the initial diameter okay and this is the initial high of the product of the wood part and then after the uh, process of um, uh, compression you will see that the diameter will start to increase and the high will start to decrease and in the end there will be a final diameter and final uh, high okay so if you can see the difference is the diameter will start to increase but the high will start to decrease. So if we assume that the open die forging uh, without no uh, without friction, okay, uh, we can assume that the, there is homogeneous deformation where the radial flow is uniform throughout the uh, work part uh, high. So then we can calculate the two, true strain using the equation uh, below which is uh, true strain uh, epsilon equal to ln h naught over h okay so if you want to look at the final one then h naught over h final <coughs> okay then <coughs> so uh, apart from that we can also calculate the f which is the force uh, needed which is y f a okay a is the cross sectional area of the part um a will will continuously to increase if we uh, until the final uh, one then you you will get the final cross section and h will start uh, h also will uh, will continue to reduce until the final um, operation okay so yf um, increase will increase due to the work hardening uh, except if the material is perfectly plastic where uh, if you heat the work part uh, into uh, hot uh, working and then uh, then uh, you can assume uh, that it is uh, perfectly plastic so in hot working the strain hardening we can assume n equal to zero so that the flow stress will equal to the yield strength of the metal itself okay so force at max will be at the end of the forging stroke meaning that uh, when the cross-sectional area is the biggest and the h is the lowest now, uh, the one that we talked previously is the ideal one, which is the homogeneous deformation. However, in the open die forging, of course, there will be friction between the workpiece and also the die. So, this is uh, the friction between the work and uh, die surfaces uh, will give lateral flow of the work so that it will result in the barreling effect. So, do you know the barrel? The barrel that... Uh, the, with the curve uh, at the side uh, that is the barreling effect we're going to look into the uh, illustration uh, later to see this barreling effect um, when we perform a hot part uh, and then the, the die uh, is cool the barreling uh, effect will be more pronounced okay so this result from a higher coefficient of friction between the hot working uh, part and also the uh, heat transfer at the near of the die surfaces which uh, it will cool the material and then it increase the resistance to deformation so here is the illustration uh, of the open die forging with the friction 
So if you can see here, uh, this is the straight uh, line for the um, starting material. However, when we start uh, doing the compression, uh, it will start to, 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 to form curve on this side, uh, like this one. Okay, and in the end, it will create like a barrel uh, shape of uh, product. So the same like if you um, want to make a biscuit or something, there is flour. And then when you press it, it will start to uh, create the, the curve on the side. Right? So that's how uh, the barreling effect is, uh, is defined. Due to this uh, barreling effect, we have to add uh, Kf in the equation uh, for the F here if uh, the, the, the di uh, upper diverging is uh, with the friction. Okay, So as Kf is the uh, forging shape factor, so this is calculated by using the Kf equal to 1 plus 0 0.4. Uh, this is a coefficient of friction times the D. And also the H, H is the high, work part high uh, of certain uh, high when you produce the, the, the part, okay, when the deformation, okay. So the D is the work part diameter. Here are some links to videos of open die forging. So look into the process so that you will know how the actual process of open die forging uh, is being conducted. The next part that we are looking into is the impression die forging. Impression die forging is a compression of work part by dies with inverse of the desired part shape. Okay, so in here the die will be um, uh, designed into inverse of the shape that you want to create uh, to create, and then uh, compress the work material in between that dies. Then you will get the final product. So sometimes it is called closed die forging. So in here, the flesh will be formed, uh, which flow be, uh, beyond die cavity into the small gap between the die plates. Okay, so flesh must be letter three because it is a scrap. Okay, uh, you it is um, the part that you don't want uh, for your product. Okay, so but it serves an important function during the compression process uh, as the flesh form, the friction uh, resists continue the metal flow into the gap. And then constraining metal uh, will start to fill the die cavity. In hot forging, uh, metal flow is further restricted by the cooling against die plates. Here is the illustration for the impression die forging. So before the uh, initial contact with the raw workpiece, you will see that this is the uh, starting work part. And then this is the die with the cavity design. And then... Uh, the force will be applied to the work part and you will see that the material will start to fill in the uh, edges of the um, area here okay so and then once all the materials already uh, fill in the cavity the excessive um, metal will go out uh, on the uh, in between the the two uh, die and then will create the flesh here okay in this process, you will not be able to uh, to do it in just one step. It is uh, a several uh, forming step uh, in order to get the final product. So uh, we separate die cavity for each step. So beginning step will dis redistribute the metal for more uniform deformation, and desired metallurgical structure will be um, uh, tr uh, to, to will be uh, sub uh, in subsequent step. Okay, and then. Uh, when the final uh, step, it will bring the part to the final geometry. Um, I've already provided some uh, process, uh, some video uh, of the impression diverging process in, at the end of this uh, slide. You can go into that process where you can see uh, how, uh, how the process of the impression diverging is uh, being done. Uh, and until the trimming process and uh, the final product is um, uh, finished, okay. So this impression die forging usually is performed by manual uh, and by manually by skill worker. So this is um, they they are they are open to um, condition with the hot work uh, work piece and everything. So it's very uh, dangerous. So it's require skill worker to work. Uh, on this uh, 
impression die forging. Here are the two um, functions of the flash. First, uh, it can build up the high pressure so that it makes sure all the metal uh, will fill in the um, cav cavity inside the die. And another one is it acts as the safety value for excess metal. So meaning that uh, excess metal can easily come out where it can protect the die from breakage and it can also uh, protect the work part that we want to create from uh, excessive pressure so that uh, it is uh, safe. So in this process, it is necessary to achieve uh, the complete filling of the forging cavity without generating excessive pressure. So if, we, if excessive pressure is uh, inside the, the die here, both the die and also the workpiece will uh, damage. Okay. The same like the open die forging with um, uh, with the friction, the force in the impression die forging is calculated by using F equal to KF YFA. Okay. So in this uh, <coughs> in this process, YF is calculated by using uh, K epsilon N, while for KF it is given through the tables. Uh, if it is the pro uh, product is simple shape uh, with flash, it will be 6. Complex shape with flash will be 8. And very complex shape with flash will be 10. Okay. So, uh, this one is for the flashless forging that we're going to look into. It also have the KF where uh, they are coining for with the 6.0 and complex shape with 8.0. So here are some advantages and limitation of the uh, impression die forging. So if we compare the um, impression die forging to the machining process, okay, uh, it can produce higher production rate because it can uh, be done faster, and then it can create less waste of material and greater strength, and it also have favorable grain orientation in the metal due to the uh, hot working and everything okay and also the the compression okay so however the limitation will be uh, no capable of close to close tolerance compared to the machining if machining we can go uh, into very close tolerance uh, as for this one uh, if you are using the hot uh, working the, there's possibility of shrinkage and Machining is often required to achieve the accuracies and features needed. So usually, uh, it is uh, performed uh, bigger than um, it's supposed to be, and then it uh, the product must going through the machining process in order to get the uh, final surface roughness or final shape with the tolerance. So here are some link to videos of impression die forging process. So you can look into this process to know about the impression die forging. We're going to look into the last process, which is the flashless forging. Flashless forging uh, is a process where the compression of work uh, in the punch and die, uh, where the cavity does not allow for flash. So meaning that the volume for the work piece um, before the uh, compression process must be the same uh, for the final one. So the starting uh, work volume must be equal uh, in order to make sure the, uh, the tool is protected. If not, then the work material and also the flash will uh, uh, and the uh, die will be uh, broken. So process control more demanding than the impression die forging because uh, it is more into the precision uh, forging. So it is best suited for part geometry that are simple and symmetrical and it is also classified as precision forging process. Now let us look into the process. Uh, here are the diagram showing the flashless forging. So this is the uh, condition where uh, the die here they have a complete uh, closed uh, area over here. The work material will be um, placed in the middle part and then it will be punched. Okay, and then this is uh, partial compression. If you can see the work material will start bulging and uh, filling the uh, cavity. And then in the end, it will uh, be complete uh, by filling all the uh, area inside the cavity. So this one is just a simple one. As for the flashless forging, you can also create um, a certain design. But uh, it's supposed to be simpler compared to the impression die forging.
for the classification of the proging operation can be done in uh, two classification one is in term of the work temperature and another one is on the um, whether it is impact of rest press forging okay so for cold versus uh, hot forging uh, hot or warm forging the, uh, the advantages will be in the reduction of the strength so then uh, it will increase the ductility of the work material so it will be easier for the forging operation to take place uh, for cool forging, the advantages will be increased strength due to the strain hardening, uh, but the work material must be ductile enough to be forged. If not, then uh, you'll, you will break the die or the, the work piece uh, itself will be broken. And another one is impact of press forging. For forging hammer, it apply an impact forge, so uh, it's going to be a very huge uh, forces. And then uh, for just uh, forging press, so it apply gradual forces. Let us look into the forging hammers. So for forging hammers, it apply impact load against work parts, work parts through two types. First is through gravity drop hammer. So uh, the impact energy will be from the falling weight of the heavy ram. And another one is the power drop hammer where it accelerate the ram by pressurized air or steam. Uh, this, the disadvantages of the forging hammer will be the impact energy that will be transmitted through the anvil into the floor uh, of the building. So this is not a healthy uh, work environment for the workers. Uh, so it is commonly used for impression die forging. The picture here showing the diagram uh, on the detail of the draw ha uh, drop hammer for impression die forging. If you can see, this is the head. Uh, this is the piston rod and then uh, there are frames working here and there are anvil on the bottom and this is the ramp. So this is how uh, where the um, hammering happened. Okay? So this is why um, the forces will go, uh, will, will give the vibration to the anvil and then it will transmit it to the floor which is not good. In the other hand, forging press will apply gradual pressure to accomplish the compression operation. So there are three methods to achieve the forging press. There are mechanical press. This one it will convert rotation of the drive motor into linear motion of ram. Uh, second, using the hydraulic press. So this one, of course, using hydraulic piston to actuate the ram. And the last one is screw press where the screw mechanism will drive the ram. Let us look into the picture on this uh, operation. So here are the comparison for all uh, type of the forging machine. So the first one is the drop hammer. If you can see, uh, the, this is the ram. Uh, what happened is all the ram here will, will go up and then it will be released. And then using the weight of the ram, it will hit into the workpiece. Okay. So for the screw press, there will be a flywheels and also uh, so that uh, and screw so that uh, when this screw is uh, being uh, rotated so that it will uh, gradually uh, give uh, forces to this um, uh, part okay and the next one is crank press which is the uh, mechanical part okay mechanical press so this one is using the crank uh, shaft um, mechanism where it, when it is rotated, it will gradually give pressure to the workpiece uh, in rotational um, uh, way, meaning that it give uh, once it's moving, it give press and then it release and then it give press uh, again. Okay, so the next one will be the hydraulic press. So for the hydraulic press, uh, this one is given by the hydraulic um, uh, pressure here. So then it will. Uh, give the pressure, uh, the press um, gradually to the work part in here. So here we are showing the differences, of course, uh, because this is uh, just an animation. Um, in, in the real world, forming a hammer will be faster and will be um, bigger in terms of the pressure given. Okay. So this is how the forging press. So it is done uh, slowly so that until you get all the um, uh, final shape. Now let us look into other operation related to the forging process. The next process will be uh, upsetting and heating where the forging process uh, used to form the head on the nail, bowl and similar hardware products. So in this uh, process, 
more part produced by upsetting than any other uh, forging operation. So it perform uh, either cold, warm or hot and uh, the machine called heater or former. So wire or bar stock is fed into the machine and then uh, the end will be um, a punch okay, to get the bowl and uh, uh, the head of the uh, bowl. Okay? So the thread rolling is then used to form the thread. So uh, I'm going to give you the link to the video um, on how the bowl and nuts uh, are created. So here is the process. Okay. So if you can see here, uh, the starting material, which is the wire stock, will be fed to, to the stop here. Okay. And then when it's already stopped, the uh, part here, uh, will the die will grip the, the, the wire stock here. And then uh, the stock will retract. Uh, the stock will go up. And then the punch will move forward and punch into the, um, the head part here. So then the bottom, uh, it will create the uh, head of the nail or the part. Uh. There are some other examples on how the heating process is being done. So if you can see, uh, uh, this one is by punching to get the uh, head of a nail uh, using the open die. Okay, so this there are no um, uh, close area over here. Okay, so then you will get the nail um, head of, like this and then round head formed by the punch. So the punch is designed to get the shape of the um, uh, round head like this one. And then this is the uh, head style where this is the countersink and then this is the hexagon uh, shape and then this is the uh, another type of uh, uh, nail. Okay. So uh, there are also the link, this is the link to show the uh, how the upsetting process is done for the uh, uh, bowl and nuts. Okay? So take a look into this one to see the real uh, process on how the process is being um, performed. There are also explanation on the uh, each step of the process. The next process we are looking into is swagging. Swagging is a rotating die where it hammer the workpiece radially. So previously we only see the open die forging and the one uh, that uh, create the, the shape, a certain shape, right? So for this one, swagging is particularly only for the radial uh, uh, part where you want to create, uh, want to reduce the diameter of the workpiece. So this one is used to reduce the diameter of tube or solid rod stock and usually mandrel uh, required to control the shape and the size of the internal diameter of the bullet part. This process showing uh, of the, uh, the illustration of the swagging process. So if you can see this is the die. So in this uh, area, in this uh, uh, process, not only the die will be moving up and down and it it will also rotating so in order to um, maintain the diameter of the work part if it is only moving on one uh, uh, surface like this one um, so that uh, the diameter will not be uniform on uh, all uh, area so that's why the in swagging both the die will be moving up and down and also rotating in the same uh, time so here is the illustration showing the how how the swagging process uh, happened. So uh, actually, it is moving in rotation, uh, rotated like this one. This one is just to uh, show the focus. Okay, so it, not only it is rotating, it is also moving up and down to reduce the diameter of the uh, workpiece. You can look into the swagging process in the link given at the bottom. So the last process is trimming. So this trimming process is a, a cutting operation to remove the flesh from the work part uh, in impression die forging. You can also see in the video in the previous um, impression die forging, I've already see, uh, attached the link to the process. Uh, usually the part will be placed on um, these cutting edges. Okay, and then it will be punched and then it will be uh, the, the part will go down here and the remaining will be on the uh, die here. 
Okay, so after that, you just remove the, the flesh and then you can get the final product. Now, let us look into the problem. Um, a cool heading operation from the head of a steel nail. So, the strength coefficient of the steel is 500 MPa and the strain hardening exponent equal to 0 0.22. So, uh, the coefficient of friction at the die work interface is 0 0.14. So, the diameter of the wire stock for the nail is 4.0 mm. The nail head diameter is 10 and thickness is 1.5 mm. The final length of the nail equal to 60 mm. So, here they want what length of stock must project out of the die in order to provide sufficient volume of work material for this upsetting operation. Okay, so um, it looks very confusing, right? So, the actually it is very uh, easy if you go into this uh, part here so uh, we want to understand what they want actually so if we uh, i'm going to show you the illustration sorry for my drawing it is not that good okay so they want to know how much is the work material that's supposed to be coming out here right so uh, before you you do the uh, uh, the process of uh, heading okay so the first thing that first we have to know what will be the final uh, volume of the hail net okay so if um, we can see the volume calculation so volume of for the head will be pi d squared time the h final over the 4 okay this one is just the normal volume uh, um, calculation for the circle like this okay for the head okay so this is the calculation for the volume okay so since we already have the val value for the final so d squared is given by here 10 10 mm hf Thickness will be 1.5 and then divide by 4. So then you will get the final volume will be 117.8 mm cube. Okay, so then what we have to do is cross sectional area of wire stock. Okay, the initial one, what will be the cross sectional area? So this one is the calculation for the area A, A equal to by d squared over 4. So then you will get the area, right? Cross-sectional area. So it is given uh, the wire stock diameter is 4.0 mm, uh, mm. Okay. So then we just put the value here. So you will get the area here. Okay. So now do you remember the calculation for volume? Volume equal to area times the uh, in term of the uh, usually is the uh, width or the thickness right so as for this one is the high okay the volume is cross sectional area time h here right okay since we already have the volume the final volume and we also know the cross sectional area so what you have to do is h node equal to volume over a then you will get the calculation uh, for the value of H node. So it is given 117.8 divided by the A node. Then you will get the final uh, high at uh, the initial high that you want to to have. Okay. So that the the A. So now we go for the B. Compute the maximum force that the punch must apply to form the head in the open die operation okay it's already given open die operation so if you go back to the open die operation f equal to kf uh what is it uh a eh, eh, yf a right remember this one okay so now we already have the a what we don't have here is the k and also the yf kf and yf so yf is calculated by 500 
times uh, no, uh, epsilon, right? So epsilon, you have to calculate the epsilon first equal to loan 9.737 divided by 1.5. So how how is this uh, uh, come up? If you go back here, so uh, the initial high is 9.37. The final one is 1.5 mm, right? So then you will get the epsilon value equal to 1.83. So then when you put it inside the YF equation, you are going to get 571 MPa. And then uh, for the area for the final will be uh, pi d squared over 4. So you will get 78.5 mm squared. So then uh, Kf is 1 plus 0 0.4. Okay, time the 0 0.14. And that this one you can refer to the the equation uh, again kf equal to uh, 1 plus 0 0.4 uh, uh, i don't remember okay so uh, you refer to the equation again for this one okay when you fill in all the value inside here and then you will be able to calculate the f using the value that you already uh, calculate okay so here is another uh, question. You can try it on your own. This one is, uh, for example, this one yield point is already given where the strain is uh, 0 0.002. Uh, this is the condition where high is given is 35 and high is given 30. Here is the solution. If you look into the solution, actually it is uh, the same method uh, is being used. It is involved the volume. And then it involves the calculation of the area and then you can get the uh, kf and then you can calculate the f uh, value okay so everything is just following the uh, step of using the uh, the equation given okay so you can just uh, try it on uh, this part try to to solve it if you have any problem on understanding uh, you can always contact me okay that's the end for the forging process uh, lecture. So we're going to look into the next process in the next class. Thank you for listening. Assalamualaikum.